bid for this title, for this magnificent trophy, which is two years old and worth £4,000, and for total prize money, worth more than £22,000. These are the five players involved. Clive Rice of South Africa, captain of Norwich, an inspirational cricketer and regarded as one of the finest captains in the world. Malcolm Marshall of the West Indies, the world's fastest bowler and the England's batsman this summer. And who can forget his courageous one-handed innings in the Old Trafford Test match? Our own Ian Botham, whose amazing Test match record speaks for itself. The only man to score more than 4,000 runs and take over 300 Test wickets, and he's still only 20. New Zealand's number one cricketer, Richard Hadley, and now cricketer of the first man since 1967 to do the double of 1,000 runs and 100 wickets in a season. And finally, Dev of India. He captained them to their famous victory in the World Cup last year and has over 250 test wickets and 2,000 runs to his name. This, very briefly, is how the competition works. Each batsman, in this case Clive Rice, faced 16 overs, four from Malcolm Marshall, four from Ian Botham, four from Richard Hadley, and four from Kapil Dev. And no matter how many times he is dismissed, he bats right through the 16 overs. Now to the system of scoring. The total number of runs he gets is divided by the number of runs to arrive at a batting average. And here in this example, you see that Clive Rice has a batting average of 30. And that is multiplied by the number of wickets he takes in his 16 overs of bowling to give his total number of challenge points. So the batting average of 30 multiplied by the five wickets he takes gives the total number of challenge points of 150. It's a simple format. That's how the competition is going to be run. Let's have a word now with the men who will be applying their for all our talents uh, to this competition, starting with Clive Rice. Clive, four days ago, you lost the championship race. I hope that you're going to have a, a better day as far as this is concerned. Well, that was a dramatic fin finish, and if this game goes to the last two, two balls like that, I think we'll all be shattered as well. Strategy for today? Well, as a bet, I think you can't actually get out. It's hard enough getting hold of these fellows without being your, having your runs devoured. And uh, a half run against them is not really satisfactory. Can't get out as I see it. Let's talk to Malcolm Marshall over. Malcolm, just back from a holiday in Barbados. I suppose you feel that the benefit today will be uh, achieved with the ball. Well, I hope I can get. I'm not so sure I'm going to make any runs. As <laughs> 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 if. me just know. If I survive over, I think I'll be batting long so far after the. Are you going to be uh, bowling full out for all of your four overs? Uh, let's just wait and see how things go. Ian, you can't get away from this guy, Marshall, can you? Oh, we're just good friends. <laughs> 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 what is your strategy? Is it all out fast and furious from the start? Uh, slog and hope. <laughs> play as I've always played. And try and generate this taunt and roar? Well, I haven't seen many here from taunt. It seems to be a lot of the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> from elsewhere, shall we say? How much is home advantage going to count in the. <laughs> think, uh, Ian? I don't think it'll make any difference. The wicket should be good. The yeah, outfield's good. <laughs> played here before. So, uh, Probably, <laughs> sure. as long as it's not as close as last week, we'll be happy. Good luck, anyway. <laughs> the man who's the, the press favourite at the moment, Richard, congratulations on Cricket of the Year. A <laughs> runs, 100 wickets. Um, that kind of form must give you a very good chance. <laughs> Take your finger out of my ear, both of them. <laughs> well, uh, to go in his favourite is a bad, uh, bad situation. I think I'd rather go in his underdog, but anything can happen the day. I mean, we've got uh, five very good players here and be very competitive and one hopes that uh, we'll entertain the crowd. Oh. I'm sure that's going to happen. Capil, you're the bookie of it for this. What is the strategy as far as you're concerned? Well, I'm batting in the end, so I have to see what uh, other people do. <laughs> I have to think twice, so I'll go what they do. And you've just done for many years, so you're, 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 you're in form, certainly, aren't you? Well, uh, fairly all right. <laughs> There's a man who we'd love to have seen playing today, Imran Khan. Imran <laughs> has kept you off the pitch today. Um, who do you think of these five is likely to be successful? Actually, you know, <laughs> it's the challenge here. The good news, as you can see, the sun is out, getting nice and warm. A good day ahead, I'm quite sure. Can <laughs> confirm that the winner of this competition will not only get <laughs> a trophy, but also a cheque for 6,000 pounds.
Now, the first batsman in, Clive Rice of South Africa. Bonnie, captain, he's had a wonderful start. Four. already from Malcolm Marshall and four from Ian Botham. Up to Richard Hadley and he's in the 50. Get really up to date with our commentary team, Imran Khan. Um, and leading off, Brian Moore. What a contest here now as Hadley bowls to Rice. It's quite a contest between these two. Of course, teammates in Nottinghamshire, but they're rivals today. They've been working out their private strategy. Clive Rice, slightly for the moment, but he was saying to Richard Hadley last night, don't it? He to set the field for you tomorrow. Hadley, of course, who's had a marvellous season, top of the first class bowling averages for the third time. And Clive Rice, the 35 year old South African, got 92 here against Schmidt on Tuesday. Ooh. In that dramatic match when Knox were pipped at the post by Essex for the championship. And it's been a really good score for Clive Rice into his 50s without his wicket once. So he's going to accumulate runs and bat sensibly. See, Imran Khan. It's been uh, the first knock here by Clive Rice. Yes, he's batted very sensibly. He's been beaten a few times, uh, but fortunately for him, he's managed not to get out so far. And I think he'll be quite hard to beat. Well, had to Rice. Driven beautifully, straight for another four. It's ten fours that Clive Rice has hit. Fine shot, him man. This Clive is very strong in the V between middle and mid off. Plays very straight. That was just a demonstration of that great strength he's got. Around the wicket there, and uh, actually just outside the off stump, the wicket that you can sure you'd recognise there, Bob Cooper, just retired after so many great seasons with Derbyshire and with England. Going to a new career, as he tells me working for a cricket boot manufacturer. So Richard Hadley again to clear out for Rice. He just pulled that away there, but over Bill Finkel, how many four runs off that open? As you can see, Clive Rice with 55 runs. So important that he doesn't lose his wicket. Once you your second innings, of course, you halve the scores. Let me just remind you that uh, the scoring the batting average, number of runs divided by the number of innings, multiplied by the number of wickets that are taken when the bowler becomes a bowler. Another well struck, but get through the field on that occasion. Pringle doing some good fielding there on Bell with uh, Richard Hadley. He's a 17-year-old schoolboy is Nick Pringle. And, uh, they're all first-class fielders coming from Somerset, Gloucestershire and Worcestershire as Richard Hadley comes in again. Good bit of fielding off his own bowling there. Rice has scored a th runs ten times in his career. The program describes him as being ruthlessly competitive. Richard Hadley describes him as mean. Well, there are 
are microphones everywhere here, and I think you may have <coughs> Dickie Bird's voice there. Our umpires today, Dickie Bird and David Evans, both test match umpires. Here comes Hadley again. Yes. Wait. He still has one over left from Kapil Dev. The last over of Clive Rice's innings. As far as I'm concerned, 71 is a winning score. If you can just play out the rest of these six deliveries, not get out. I can't see many... Uh, the, the pressure on the coming batsman is going to be so huge and if he doesn't get out I think Clive is a, is, is a favorite for me to win this competition but still when he goes to bowl him ran he's he's got to take wickets to get himself into the competition but you're right and here's Kapil Dev again oh. and you, Ian Botham might have something to say about that he's determined that he's going to open his shoulders and he's determined as in his own words to have a charge at Malcolm Marshall and that let me remind you will come up live on World of Sport at about three o'clock that could well be something not to be missed Clive Rice having trouble with that hand again I was saying a bit earlier that he'd taken a knock on the middle finger of the right hand and uh, I think Imran we were feeling that that might well impede his bowling a little later on it's it's caused him problems all summer Yes, I think if he, I don't know how badly he's been hit there, but he might not be able to hold the ball. And that could actually rule him out of the competition. Make things a bit difficult for us, too. Well, here comes Kapil Dev. Well, doesn't look as though he wants to block out the over. He's still looking to accumulate those runs. One more there for him. Seventy two now, and four balls to go. always going away down the leg side and I think in his heart Kapil Dev knew that three balls left and Rice must be saying to himself let's just keep it out just keep it out now Two balls to go. is taken by Clive Rice. Just one ball to go, Bill Friendle now. Seventy-two. He's not been out. He'll be telling himself that this is not the time to spoil that record. it away down to third man that's a single the last ball of Clive Rice's excellent innings a quick word from him ran about it well 
provided Clive can um, just bowl reasonably well, I think he'll be very hard to beat now. This puts a hell of a lot of pressure on any of the batsmen who are going to come in because they have to make sure they, can't, they should not get out. And with the bowling attack that's with bowlers like Marshall, Hadley, Botham, there's very little chance that, you know, that a, a batsman can bat throughout without getting out once. Well, that computer there tells us that he really has set a challenge for everybody else. 16 overs, 73 runs scored and not out. In 62 minutes, he faced 102 balls and hit 11 fours. 12 of those runs came by way of extras. So the South African captain should have been well pleased with that. Well, next in will be Malcolm Marshall, and there's cricket for you right through the afternoon on World of Sport, and it promises to be some really exciting stuff now that uh, Rice has set that sort of standard. We're going to take a short break. Welcome back to World of Sport here at Taunton. We're going to pause from cricket for a moment because we have some news for you. Let's join Anne Lucas at ITN. The Princess of Wales, whose second baby is due any time now, has been in... Some cricket news, first of all. Kent has sacked Chris Tavery as their captain. Chris Cowdery will be replacing him next summer. Tavery has been skipper for the last two years, and he's led Kent to successive NatWest Trophy titles. He would not comment today on the decision. Cowdery's appointment completes a great week for the 26-year-old all-rounder who was selected on Wednesday for England's tour of India this winter. Well, with me is another county captain. I think he's still got his job, Clive, <laughs> captain of Nottinghamshire. Um, and what a start, a marvellous start. 73 runs without dismissal, exactly what you wanted. Well, that's what I wanted. I was a little bit lucky with the one off Malcolm, where I got a nick and it was really flying to third slip. And uh, luckily they didn't hang on to it. That would have made it a lot more difficult, but I wanted to start off with. So they couldn't halve my runs. Mm -hmm. And I, any wicket I get, it's just going to multiply the total that I've got. Was Malcolm bowling at full pitch, at full pace? Well, it was coming down quick enough for me, believe me. <laughs> it was, uh, uh, he was getting quite a lot of steep bounce. In fact, the wicket there is quite a sporting wicket. Mm. You know, all of them were just getting to seam around a little bit. I hope when I bowl, I can do the same. Well, you've certainly set a, a tremendous target for everyone else. Of course, you've got to back that, uh, that up with some wickets when you start bowling uh, against Malcolm Marshall, who will be batting next. Well, Malcolm, Richard, all of them messed me around out there. It's my chance to mess them around now. <laughs> Anyway, going beautifully at the moment. Thank you very much indeed, Clive. Thank Congratulations. For a good start. Thanks. Right, well, let's now go live back and join our commentators because Malcolm Marshall is about to start his 16 overs as a batsman this time, of course. Let's rejoin our commentators. Uh, that's Imran Khan, John Helm and Brian Moore. Thank you very much, uh, Dickie. So here comes Malcolm Marshall. The feeling, I think, here, and Malcolm Marshall admits that he shares that belief, is that he's probably the weakest of the five batsmen. That remains to be seen. He's certainly the quickest of the five bowlers. So a good hand for Malcolm Marshall. A scourge of English batsmen this summer. And the non-striking batsman there, Nigel Felton from Somerset. And uh, no doubt Malcolm Marshall will have had a word or two with uh, Nigel just to tell him what he requires out there. And the first bowler that Malcolm Marshall will face will be Ian Botham. So quite a confrontation here. They've certainly seen plenty of one another during the summer. Now, interestingly enough, Ian Botham will have a new ball. Each bowler does have a new ball to start with. few limbering up exercises and it really is quite a glorious scene here at Taunton now the sun uh, beginning and that shorter run there and he still doesn't get the wicket that he wants and so Richard Hadley does not fall into third place as he'd hoped it's really been a good day's cricket and taking in Ron Khan's point I think it's there's certain areas about it that has to be looked at. It was the first after all, and it can only get better. But certainly when you think of the professionalism of Clive Rice, the blustering and blistering attack by Ian Botham, elements like that in the day's play, and some excellent catching. 
The weather that's gone with it and a really enthusiastic crowd, all those things have added up. As you can see, Capel Dirk with 4 for 90 comes out as the top bowler with an average of 22.50. With Bryce second, Botham third, Marshall and Hadley both failing to get a wicket. And what is most important of all, here's how we go. The first prize of £6,000 then goes to Clive Rice with 511 points. In second place, £5,000 with 120 points is Capital Dev. Ian Botham picks up £4,000 for third place with 54 points. And after that, we have Hadley and Marshall. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's certainly been a very eventful week here at Taunton, hasn't it? We've had that dramatic finish on Tuesday that deprived Nottinghamshire of the county championship. And today, the first ever Silk Cut Challenge, which has produced a remarkable day's action. And I think we really must congratulate the sponsor, Silk Cut, for this event. And I hope that it continues year after year after year. Would you agree? Yeah. Now it's time to give away the prizes, and I'd like to welcome the director of Silk Cut, Mike Thomas, who will make the presentation. Now, first of all, it's to the fielder of the day. This has been adjudicated by Imran Khan, and the prize goes, it is of £250, to Somerset's Nigel Felton. <laughs> and so we come to the best bowler of the day. We picked a marvellous day to do it. Clive, many congratulations. Thank you very much to you. Thank you also, Mike Thomas and Silk Cut. The scores in...